Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so frustrating. I've uploaded this video uh, three times already and it keeps getting hit with an 18 plus like censorship. So I just wanna preface that the video is still awesome. It's got a ton of great stuff in it. So if you see a couple of these censorship icons, you'll know why. If you wanna see all of the pictures from the shoot, some that I can't share here, go ahead and follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. And now let's get into the video. What's happening everybody? I'm Mike Sasser, boudoir photographer in Los Angeles. And this summer I took a trip to Europe to knock off one of my, knock off, to knock out one of my big bucket list items, going to the French Open. I've been playing tennis since I was like, three years old. It's been a dream of mine to see the top players play on the red clay and it was amazing. But that led me to being able to do another bucket list, a more recent bucket list item, which is doing a French looking boudoir shoot in a French looking place in France. And that's what we got here for you today. Now, if you've been to this channel before, you've probably seen a lot of my videos that are like three posing tips, three tips to shooting in a small space, or how to do three different types of natural light. I'm starting to realize that I really like the number three. And those videos are designed not so that I can create exactly what I wanna create, but to teach you something that you can go home and implement today, right now, that will improve your photography. But this video, I didn't wanna focus on the how-to of everything. I really just wanted to let my creativity flow and use the space and imagine there's not even a behind the scenes camera. So I just set it up and let it roll. I can't show you every single section because YouTube has some restrictions and censorship. If you guys wanna see more pictures from this shoot afterwards, I would check out my Instagram and Twitter where I can share a little bit more freely. Okay, so I think what I wanna start with is I'm gonna shoot kind of into this area. Mm -hmm. And we'll do some of you kind of sitting here. With, do I need shoes? Um, I don't think we're gonna do shoes for the first little bit. A lot of my stuff is like a little bit more like you're walking around the house and it's casual and you're just kind of having a day to yourself. So I always like to start with something more simple. I'm trying to get a feel for the space. I'm trying to get a feel for the light. So we started with some simple sitting poses. Let's have you um, roll on your hips so your feet are kicked out this way. One thing that I love doing is when I've got a piece of clothing that would normally be covering her, I like having it fall off a little. So in this case, we're using a robe, but you could also do this with like a button up shirt or a zip up sweater. Okay, keep everything exactly the same, except I want your shoulders to go this way a little bit more towards the window. So here I want you to look at the difference in the details of her body when she turns her shoulder a little bit more towards the light. All of the sudden you can see the definition in her chest and her collarbones. So this is just your reminder to be hyper aware of how the light is hitting your subject. It's totally okay to just ask her to make these little adjustments and see how the light falls on them. A super simple way to make your images look more editorial or more of a story within them is to just add a prop of some kind. So in this case, we're using a book, but again, could be could be anything just to have the model engage with something. Just look at me and just go. All right, let's talk hair. Most beginner photographers want to shoot with perfect, perfect hair. And a lot of clients are afraid of messing up their hair because then they won't be able to get it back to exactly how it was when they looked in the mirror. But having messier hair can add motion and drama to the photo, so I highly recommend any chance you get, mess up that hair a little bit. We're gonna play around a little bit like this. Now let me ask you, what is more French than a tiny little wood ladder? As soon as I saw this thing, I was like, I have to use it. So we got started, tried a couple different poses on it. Really any like simple prop that you guys can add will probably add interest. It'll add a little bit to the story of whatever theme you're trying to create. In a typical boudoir shoot that may be like plants in the background or maybe pieces of jewelry or maybe the type of furniture they lay on. But in this case, this ladder was absolutely amazing. Another way you can add interest is to create framing around your subject. So in this case, I stood back into the other room and I shot through these door frames and that's gonna draw your attention more towards your subject. 
just like, you'll play kind of around this. Yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. So all the photos so that I'm good. doing in this section, I'm using the light so triangle good. that I explained in my dark and moody tutorial. So check that out above. So this angle is gonna show you some similar photos, but in a new outfit. The light is coming from a window to the right, and the photos you're gonna see are from when I was shooting from inside this doorway. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of mess it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. so. Now this room was so cool. It had this interesting background, it had texture on the mattress, but I actually really liked the way the light was hitting her when she was standing directly in front of the window. So you're gonna see how the light wraps around her. And again, that door frame, those Center windows are going more. to frame her so to add right interest there. specifically to her the subject yeah, and make everything good. else kind of fade out in the shot. And again, my favorite pictures were from when I was further away shooting from down this hallway. Yes, I love that. Wow. Gorgeous. Okay. If you ever feel stuck or don't know where to go for the next photo, pull out your inspiration board that you put together for the shoot or from the Double Your Poses course, I've got an app that has over 150 poses with prompts. So you never run out of posing ideas or don't know where to go next. This is just like super busy. Me too. The new Paris. What else doesn't make any sense at all? <laughs> Here we go, I found it. Pipe. <laughs> okay, let's see what that looks like. So for this particular shot, I was focused on a look that would be like lazy, messy, not just for the look of the room, but also in her pose, in her hair. So mess up the bed sheets, add some props, and keep making little variations in the pose until you get exactly what you want. Your elbow pointed towards me. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Okay, eyes here. That's great. Bring your hands just an inch closer together so your elbows bend a little bit more. Yes. God, the light is amazing. Let's see if, how about we can just take this guy. And you can just kind of like, um, maybe where it's like, kind of touching your skin. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. Wow, okay. While shooting in this corner, she found this fan that looked amazing. But in the first few pictures we took, it didn't really go with her lingerie. After a little chatting, we decided to do some nude photos with the fan. If you want to learn how to transition your clients into shooting nude, get the conversation started or get more poses from it, I have an entire section about that in the Double Your Poses course. So we went ahead and turned off the video camera, but here are those photos. So this was such a fancy place. I mean, you can look at all of the details everywhere and the beautiful mirror and everything was just like almost royal that I thought it would be fun to do a shot that was like almost pouty. Kind of like she's a brat and nothing's ever good enough for her. So we set her up on this chair and we tried a couple of different poses of this like kind of I'm a brat expression. Yeah, just kind of like I'm kind of upset about today. Yeah. Okay, peeking out the window. Yeah, I love that. Okay, maybe somewhere, I know you can't untie the bow, but if you could, I want you to like make it look like you're untying it. Yeah, beautiful right there. Yeah, right there, right there, right there. 
Let's take a second to really analyze this photo. So let's start at the top. So the way her nose is pointed more towards the light is going to give us all those little highlights on her nose, on her cheek, on her lips, on her chin. You can see uh, in her ponytail, there's almost like a silhouette almost of it separate from the background, which is really beautiful. She's got a little arch in her body, which is creating some motion. Her hands are doing something. They're playing with her bra as though she might untie it, even though this outfit you can't untie. That bow is just for looks. It still adds a little visual element, a little bit of a story there. Then we've got her pointed toes, which make her look really tall, and really long. We've got a little bit of a foreground element here with the chandelier. And all of this works really well because of the light triangle that's created that's giving us this highlight shadow, highlight shadow, highlight shadow look everywhere, just really making her pop in the environment. All right, let's look at this chandelier up top. Now, normally I'm not a big fan of these. They're kind of like ornamental and don't really fit into the typical boudoir vibe that I use. But you can see these little beads, these little crystal beads that are hanging from the bottom of them. And if you shoot through them, if you make them out of focus in your foreground, they're gonna create this really beautiful, dreamy, a uh, little bit out of focus, uh, spectral sort of character in the picture that will add some depth and really look beautiful. Now you can buy uh, prisms similar to this on like Amazon, so you don't have to have a chandelier in your space. Pretty much anything that's like a crystal glass sort of character and is close to your camera and out of focus will create cool images like this. The place that we shot Mason122, I'm gonna post their Instagram below. If you're ever in Paris, I would definitely go check them out. Thank you to Andrea for connecting me with this spot, helping me make all of this happen. To get five free posing cards from that Double Your Poses course, I'm gonna put that link in the description under the like button. And I hope that helps you out during your next photo shoot. And post a comment below of which was your favorite photo set. All right, guys, I think it's time to try and maybe find another bucket list item to check off. I don't know what it's gonna be. I feel like I'm on a roll. Maybe do a photo shoot with a Vespa?